amazing story. And I think the thing about it that really gets me is I'd been in real estate for a long time. I'd been in management. I'd seen other probate programs. And I don't want to disparage anybody, but to me, they always came across as here's an easy way to get business or because the seller is vulnerable, you can buy the property cheap and flip it. There's nothing wrong with getting it at a low price because you create value, but there is there is something wrong with approaching somebody and taking advantage of their vulnerability. And you're the first person I heard that talked about, and I didn't get in your program uh, here in this. I, I was in your program when you talked about this in one of the first days of coaching. And I realized this is a whole different ballgame. I can really be a value to people and be an expert and get paid based on the value I create rather than on being paid on how much value I take from somebody else. And yep. it made the business more enjoyable. It made it more natural. It made it just easier, the whole thing. So you're 100% right. So and it's on the on the toughest day, like on those days where you're like, damn, I don't want to make these calls. Like a probate list was the one that would always motivate me through that mm -hmm. because I really believe in my heart. These people are better off hearing from the right professional, like someone who, yep. who does this the right way. Yep. They're yep. way better off hearing from that person than not hearing from them because they're going to, they're, they're, there's a, about a 98% likelihood they're going to sell that house. So I would, I take it, I looked at it as my duty to actually connect with these people who needed help the most, because otherwise they were going to work with the damn fools that had a 77% expiration rate on probate listings on my MLS. I skipped over that. That was in my market research. And we talk about it in the course. Like I found a way to kind of back test it. And 77% of a state listings in my market had expired with no, with, I mean, they may have had offers, but they expired out and weren't relisted. So I saw a huge disservice being deployed to these folks. And I'm like, well, I, I have to make this call because if I don't, they're going to be stuck with one of those other mows and they're going to waste six to 12 months of their time, um, you know, with, with an agent who's not going to get it done. My business is the other way. They're going to get it done. They're going to take the estate of this, this poor guy who passed, who served his country, put his life savings into a home for his family's wealth and, uh, and squander it on the cheap. And I see that happening all the time. And I, yeah. I'm listening right now where they're an escrow for 450 on a property that's worth, you know, maybe it's not worth 650. We have it listed now. We'll just bring it to market next weekend, but uh, maybe it's worth 600. It's certainly worth 550. I have multiple offers already 550. So it's a hundred thousand dollars more. We're going to bring the that the family and this widow is in a nursing home. Like this is, this is the difference between getting whatever the government care is and the stepped up, you know, quality medical care for her life. Of course, her husband would want her to have the benefit of the property not given to some investor on the cheap because she doesn't, you know, she trusts somebody she shouldn't trust. So, yep. So, and guys, I want to say, like, if anyone here is predominantly investor or anyone listening, like, I, I'm a real estate investor. I love buying stuff at deep discounts. Um, tomorrow, to, well, this afternoon, I'm going to tear into a house that I bought in October and it's been sitting because my father passed shortly after. So, I'm getting ready to tear into that house. It's replacement cost on the assets, probably $170,000. I paid 25 for it. The freaking roof is worth $25,000 on this house. So it's not that I don't buy them at deep, deep discounts. It's that I let the, I let the, the seller's needs dictate the strategy I use. I didn't go, I would have, you know, I told them, I'm like, you can sell this to, for, to somebody from Washington DC. We'll come in here and pay a hundred grand for this. And she wrapped me in a hug and started crying. And she's like, but they're not you. And I want you to have it. And I'm like, well, I have a $75,000 rehab cost. I want to be in it for a hundred all in. I can give you 25. And we signed it on the truck hood. So it's not that I don't, I've bought these as low as, as like 14, 15 cents on the dollar because it was what was best for the family. They wanted to give up the equity because it, they had lost, they had emotionally disconnected from it. The money didn't matter as much as just ending the bullshit. And so when you get in fighting in the family, you will have opportunity to buy these at less than 20 cents on the dollar because the emotional pain has just compounded over time and they just want it out of their life. So not to say, I mean, we, we all like to be altruistic and do the right thing, but sometimes the right thing is to get your damn checkbook out and just take it to closing in two or three days. Yeah. Yeah. It's best for them in that case.